earlier today, and I said, you know, I'm going to follow that. There's nowhere to go but down from here. So, <laughs> thank you for sharing your gift of music uh, with us today. Uh, everyone, if you would, open up your Bibles to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, and, and I've got one, path, one verse of Scripture I'm going to be preaching from today. It's Colossians 3.17. And as you're turning in your Bibles, I want to share a brief story with you. Some of you have heard this before. Some of you have not. Uh, I enlisted in the Marine Corps right out of high school. Went to boot camp right away. I did four years when I got out. Uh, my wife and I, we moved back to upstate New York where we were born and raised. And I own a small construction company. Started doing uh, home repairs, simple things like that. And then eventually went on to do remodels and then additions and uh, eventually led to building houses. Well, one of the first jobs I got uh, as a remodeler was for a man, man named Neil Tasselmeyer. Actually, it wasn't a remodel job. I was building a garage. Uh, I was building a garage for him. At the time, I was heavily involved in the Methodist Church. I was early in my 20s, but I was a trustee for Pittstown United Methodist Church. And uh, every day for about three weeks, uh, I was there. And I was talking to Neil just about every day. Now, Neil's a good old boy. Uh, he liked to hunt, he liked to fish, uh, but he didn't go to church. His wife went to church. He did not. But we talked about everything under the sun and, and uh, just kind of got to know him just a little bit. And one Monday, I showed up uh, showed up to work and he said, i got to tell you something. I said, what's that? He said, I went to church because of you this Sunday with my wife. I went with her yesterday. I said, because of me? He said, yeah, dude, you're not weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not weird. He goes, you know, all my life I've seen uh, Christian people, but, you know, they kind of preach down to you and they act a certain way and talk a certain way. I said, you hunt, you fish. You're just a normal guy like me. I said, man, I'm going to go try this church thing. So I went to church with my wife. And I share that story with you because as a Christian, the things we say and the things we do matter all the time. Witnessing is not just sharing the gospel, although that's the ultimate hope. Witnessing is living your life. If you claim the name Christ, if you're a blood-bought child of God who claims to be a Christian, then you're charged with the responsibility of being the hands and feet of Jesus. If we were to turn in our Bible to today's verse, we'd see Paul expressing that exact sentiment. This is Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, where Paul writes this, And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Simple yet powerful and deep meaning words. I share these words with you today because I think this passage, as well as any other, stands behind the heart of this camo outdoor ministry that we're starting. Do what you do, but do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Let's pray together. Father, I stand here today in awe of what You've done. I stand here today thankful. Thankful for the opportunity that's mine to stand here and to preach Your Word. Father, I pray that the words that would come out of my mouth would be rightly divided from Your Word of truth. I pray everything that I say, everything that I do might bring you honor and glory. Father, I pray through music, through word, through song, through prayer, through everything we say and do this morning, that we would bring you honor and glory. That we would exalt the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and that we would be filled with your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that even right now, if there's one who's lost here today, who doesn't know salvation, who doesn't know the grace and forgiveness of love that you have to offer through faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'd work on our hearts this morning. I pray, God, for those who would claim the name Christ, that you would draw us closer to you. And Father, I pray that everything we say, everything we do, might bring you honor and glory. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray today. Amen. Amen. Camo Sunday. Camo Sunday. You know, I've been asked several times in the past several weeks, what exactly is camo? And it's a simple question with a complicated answer. Uh, the simple answer is camo is an acronym. Camo is an acronym. It's short for Christians in Action Ministering Through the Great Outdoors. 
Ultimately, that's what camo is. Camo is an, an effort by our church to help people who love Jesus and who love the outdoors to do what they already love to do, but to do it in the name of Jesus. The Scriptures tell us, in everything you do, in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we look around our community, when we look around here in Rocky Ford, the big city, we look around in Screven County, in Jenkins County, in Bullock County, chances are we don't live where we live because of the bustling nightlife. We don't live where we live because of the abundant shopping opportunities. We don't live where we live because it's a great thriving job market. No. Folks live around here because we're country people. We love the great outdoors. You drive up and down these red dirt roads in backwoods Georgia and you see fishing boats. You see hunting rifles. You see camouflage. You see pickup trucks. You see gardens. You see farms. That's what you see. That's what we do. Now we love to do these things. We love to grow, hunt, fish. What if there was a way that we could do those but do them in the name of Jesus? That's the heart behind Camo Outdoor Ministry. And that's what we hope happens and how God will bless Camo Outdoor Ministry. To do what we already love to do, but to do it in the name of Jesus. So how will this work? What exactly is Camo? What exactly are we going to do? Well, that's going to depend a lot on you. It's going to depend a lot on individuals and what it is that you feel led, led by the Spirit of God to do. We're going to have outdoor themed events. We're going to have hunting trips and fishing trips, camping trips, shooting events, gardening things, canning, jarring, game processing, you name it. If it's done outside, we can use it for ministry. We're going to provide opportunities for Christians to do what they love and to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's going to do a couple things, folks. It's going to take events like last night where we had a game dinner. A camo dinner for Christians to get together and fellowship with fellow Christians. To share our burdens with one another. To be loved by one another. And those are good things. We ought to spend time with fellow Christians. To be held accountable. And to lift each other up in times of need. But another thing these events are going to allow us to do. It's going to allow us as the church. As blood-bought children of God. To have an opportunity to spend time with people who don't know Jesus Christ. People who don't know the power of God to salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, but have similar interests to us. We're going to have an opportunity through Camo Outreach Ministries to do what we love to do and a natural platform to share the gospel with our neighbors who are desperate for it. That's what we hope, hope to accomplish. We have a great commission as a church. And I bet if I were to take a survey here today of, of who here claims the name Christ, many people would raise their hand and say, yes, I'm a Christian. If I were to say, who as Christians believe that the Bible is the Word of God? All those Christians would say, I do, amen, and there'd be excitement about that. If I'd say, if you're a Christian, have you heard the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 18, where Jesus says, Therefore go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. Most Christians would say, yes, I've heard that. That's what Jesus says. That's the mission of the church. We're to make disciples. But if I were to ask, all right, Christians, those of you who know it, those of you who believe it and believe that God said it, how many of you are doing it? You'd hear the crickets chirping in the background. Because it's hard. Witnessing is hard. And I'm not going to stand up here in this pulpit and tell you that it's easy because it's not. But that doesn't mean it's impossible and that doesn't mean that it's optional. God didn't say, if you feel like it, make disciples. God said, no, I love you, you love me, now tell people about me. That's what camo is about. To create an opportunity where it might be a little bit easier. Because we're going to do outdoor activities. We're going to do things in God's creation. If you're on a fishing trip and you're looking at the sun coming up over the river, you can see God's fingerprints, can't you? You see Him as the sun rises through the tree line sitting in a deer stand. You see Him as you plant seeds in your garden and they start to sprout and they start to grow. You know that's the power of God to give life. These are things that we can use to help to share the gospel about the God of the Bible who spoke those things into existence. That's our ultimate goal with Camo Ministry. 
is to accomplish that goal. You know, camo, as we make disciples and as we go about and we do these activities, you know what it's ultimately about is building relationships. There are very few Christians who have the, the God-given ability to walk up to a stranger and share the gospel. There's very few of us that do, although there's some, and that's a neat thing to see when somebody's got that spiritual gift. But most of us, we have to earn the right to share the gospel with somebody, don't we? Because if our life doesn't match up to, if our words don't match up to the fit how we act, then our words mean nothing. But folks, when you take time to do what you love to do with somebody else who loves to do those same things, you start to build a relationship with somebody. You start to build a rapport where they start to respect you a little bit. And they're willing to listen to what you've got to say. That's when you can share the gospel with them. You can share the good news with lost folks. Camo's a tool to be able to do that because it's going to allow us to start a conversation about our Creator. Folks, I want to close out today by doing just that, sharing the gospel with you. All of this is pointless if we don't share the gospel. Assembling here together, it's great. It looks awesome to see full pews of people coming out in camouflage. That's a great thing to see. But we've got to share the gospel. Every event, every opportunity we have, we've got to share the love of God. And ultimately, as Christians, we need to be equipped to be able to do just that. So that's what I want to do right now. I want to share the gospel with you. When we read the Bible, we see that there's a Creator who loves us. There's a Creator, the God of the Bible, who spoke all of creation into existence, including you and me, including human beings. And when He created man, God created man in His own image. Man was created to reflect the image of God, that when all of creation would look at human beings, they would be able to see God. God made it and it was good, it was perfect. But you know what God designed us to do? He designed us to have a relationship with Him. Which means human beings are not puppets on strings. God's not up there with an Xbox controller controlling our every move. God wants us to have a relationship with us. God loves us and He wants us to love Him back. So He doesn't make us do that. He gives us a choice. He gives us what we call free will. The ability to make up our minds, choose right from wrong. We know what it is. There's sin that's in this world. Sin is defined as doing or saying or thinking anything that God forbids us to do or failing to do, say, or think what God commands us to do. When we rebel against God, we're in sin. And every single human being, no matter how much good you've done, is guilty at one point in your life of sin. Everybody. The Bible tells us no one is righteous. Not even one. God is holy. God is blameless. And by His very nature, He can't have imperfect and sin next to Him in His presence. He would be defiled. He tells us that the wages of sin, the penalty for sin, is death. Every single one of us is guilty of sin and the sentence for that is death. That is the bad news. That's what we deserve. The good news is, God loved you so much that He took on flesh, that He sent His Son, Jesus, into this world to die on that cross as payment for your sin. Jesus Christ died on that cross so you don't have to. So you can have eternal life. But folks, there's a condition on that. There's a condition. It's not automatic. Jesus did that. But that doesn't mean the work is complete. His work is complete. The next step is up to you. He reached out on that cross in love. And He died a death so you don't have to. God sent His Son into this world so that all who believe in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. The scriptures tell us if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. You'll be saved from that death. You'll be given eternal life. But it's only if you surrender your life to Jesus Christ and ask Him to be Lord. You've got to ask Him to be Lord. And if you've never done that, 
And I'm about to step on some people's toes. If you've never done that, you're going to pay the penalty for your sins. But you don't have to. You can right here, right now, today, or at any time, say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm not perfect, but would you forgive me? And I'll accept you as Lord of my life. Let me be your hands and feet. Will you save me? And as Lynn comes up here and, and she leads us in singing, that's the invitation I want to give to you today. If you're sitting in here today and you have never with your mouth confessed that Jesus is Lord and believed in your heart, that God has raised Him from the dead, then your work is incomplete. You need to confess that He is Lord of your life and allow Him to be Lord of your life. You need to give Him everything you've got. Say, Jesus, I know I'm not good enough to do it on my own, but I know You're good enough and Your sacrifice was perfect. Be Lord of my life. Watch how He changes you. Watch how He steps in and He saves you. And He starts to transform you. If you want to know more about that, as Lynn sings, I would invite you to come forward. Let me pray with you about that. Let me talk with you about that. If God is speaking, don't run. Folks, maybe you're a Christian and you're sitting here today, but you've gotten off the beaten path and you need to confess your sins. Confess them to God. Ask Him to forgive you. Ask Him to restore you. And He'll do just that. Recommit to Him. Maybe you're a Christian and you're looking for a church home. You're looking for a place where you can get plugged in and you can minister to others. And you can use your gifts and talents to serve Him. And you think this church is a place that you could do that. If that's you, come forward. Let me celebrate that with you and, and join us in fellowship. I don't know how God has spoke to you today. But I do know this, that God is a personal God. That God loves you. God loves you and He's a living God even today. And He desires to save you. And whatever it is that He's calling, to, calling you to do, would you respond to it? Let's pray together. God, we're grateful for the gift of today. Father, we're grateful for the privilege that's ours to be able to serve you. We look forward to being able to do what we love to do, God. But we also know there's a challenge to do that in your name. Father, as we go forward in, in camo ministries, as we go forward in these outdoor ministries, God, we pray for your blessings to be upon them. God, we know that when we surrender our lives to you and we give this ministry up to you, that you'll bless it. Father, I pray that you'd work through each and every one of us here to spread the good news of salvation through, your son, through faith in your Son, Jesus, to our community around us. Father, I pray if there's anyone in here who doesn't know you, I pray, God, that they'd know you right now. I pray that they would recognize that they're sinners, that they need a Savior, that you provided that Savior, and, and be able to experience the blessings and transformation that you would give them. God, we love you. We thank you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray today. Amen.